Hi, welcome to Good and United Methodist Church's worship for Sunday, August 9th, 2020. Matthew 14, verses 22 through 33. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed a strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about my brother. My big brother, Randy Lee, or as we liked to call him back when I was a kid, Little Randy. Um, little Randy was opposed to my dad, who was Big Randy, of course. But my brother was a pretty, pretty great guy. At least that's what I thought. When I was a kid, I absolutely idolized him. He taught me how to play basketball, which was my favorite sport as a kid. He taught me how much a baseball hurts when it's thrown straight at your face and your glove isn't there to catch it. He also taught me where to put my fingers in the laces of a football to throw a perfect spiral. And of course, I mastered the art of, of throwing the perfectly terrible spiral. I was always wanting to tag along because at two years older than me, he seemed to already know how to do everything and always seemed to be the coolest about it all. One year when he was about seven-ish, he got a BB gun for his birthday and he loved that thing. But the problem was, so did I. I always wanted to shoot it, but he would insist I was too young. I'd go cry to mom and dad and they'd tell me they couldn't force him to let me use it because it was his and that if I wanted to shoot it, I would have to work it out with my big brother. Man, I loved the sound of that gun. I loved the way the compressed air would spit out the BB. I loved the clunk that BB made when it hit those empty cans and set up in the backyard. I loved everything about that gun. And Randy Lee knew it. Well, one day he got tired of running down the hill to set up the cans. So he promised me that he would let me try shooting his gun once if I was willing to set the cans up for him. Now it was summer in West Virginia, and so it gets pretty hot and humid. And so my brother and I were both dressed appropriately uh, for, for that kind of, of weather. I can't tell you what exactly I was wearing, but I, I, I can't tell you the, the t-shirt or if I was even wearing shoes because I was a kid and it was summer, but I can tell you about the shorts. They were bright red, like fire engine red, and made of an incredibly thin material. And apparently, Every time I ran down through the yard and bent over to set up the knocked over cans, Randy Lee would see my rump in those bright red shorts and the temptation in his soul just grew and grew. Until that very last time that I ran down the hill to set up his cans and this time, this time I was so excited because I was going to get to shoot the cans and I couldn't wait. But he couldn't resist temptation, it turns out, because this time those bright red shorts looked too much like a target to him, and he shot a BB at my derriere. 
And now here's the thing. He'd been shooting all day, and he had gotten pretty good at aiming by then. And I, I didn't even know what had hit me. All I knew was something hit my backside and stung like nothing I'd ever felt before. And slowly, my brain began to put the pieces of that puzzle together. I had heard the sound of the compressed air. I had heard the whiz of the BB and then the pain in my hindquarters. And all of a sudden, I let out a well that would make a tornado siren pale in comparison. Well, needless to say, the BB gun was taken away. I was assured I was going to live, although I had my doubts. Mom and Dad said there wasn't even any blood. It was okay, but I still didn't believe it because he shot me. My big brother shot me. And after some angry growling back and forth at each other, we eventually went back to being brother and sister. Well, fast forward a few years, and my brother has learned to swim pretty well, but I'm, I'm still iffy about the water. I can swim, but I'm not a strong swimmer, and I don't do so well in the deep water. But during swim lessons, I had gotten used to jumping off the diving board, where my instructor would catch me and help me back to the edge. And so one day, we're at this pool party. It was a combined affair between my brownie troop and Randy Lee's Cub Scout troop. And I wanted to jump off the diving board. My dad, who was my first choice at catching me and helping me get back to the, to the edge, he was busy with all the Cub Scout stuff. And my mom did not swim. You put her head underwater and she comes up looking like a wet cat. It, it's kind of a scary thing. So Randy Lee agreed he would help me if I would jump in. He would get me back to the edge. Well, now, we had been jumping in the five-foot water, and that was over both of our heads. And each time, he caught me like he said he would, and he got me back to the edge of the water. And so Mom decides it's probably safe, and, he, and she agrees to let us do this. So I climbed onto the highest of the two diving boards, and I bounced once, and everything's great. I bounced twice, and I'm so filled with exhilaration. Bounced three times, and I fly into the air, and all of a sudden, I realize who I have trusted with my life. I'm jumping into 12 feet of water, expecting my brother, who was treading water below me, to get me safely to the edge of the pool. My brother, Randy Lee, little Randy, little Randy who shot me. And as I plummeted toward that water, the pain of that old BB wound erupted in my soul, and I splashed into more water than felt humanly possible, and I was certain, I was just certain he was going to let me drown. When I bobbed back up to the surface, I was in full panic mode. I mean, I am thrashing wildly for anything to get hold of, which is impossible to do in 12 feet of water. I'm kicking like I'm trying to fend off a great white shark. And I'm trying to scream between gulps of, of chlorinated water. And I'm thinking, this is it. This is it. I had trusted him enough to climb up on this high dive, and he was going to let me drown. I could not understand why he wasn't helping me. And just before I was certain that the light at the end of the tunnel was about to open up and engulf me whole, my hands were suddenly on the ladder, and I had something steady to hold on to. I had no idea how to get there, but one thing became abundantly clear. My brother was mad. Boy, was he mad. Oh, I have never seen my brother so mad. He pushed me up that ladder and onto the hot concrete, and he stormed off to tell Mom how I had almost killed us both with all my kicking and punching and screaming and just generally acting a fool. Well, sometimes, even when everything is going perfectly, when we've taken a big step of faith into the unknown, we suddenly realize what's going on around us, and we panic, don't we? Well, Peter did just that, too. In a frightening moment when the sea was beating against their little boat and the winds threatened to overturn them, they saw Jesus, but couldn't recognize him because of their fear. 
But when Jesus reassures them that he's not a ghost, that he's not, you know, the, the bringer of death, and they realize that their friend, their teacher, is actually walking on water, Peter being Peter, the spontaneous one in the group, he wants to do it too. And for a moment, it all goes splendidly. He steps out of the boat and onto the water in which he should sink, but instead he's able to walk as confidently as he does on land. He takes a step and this is amazing. Then he takes another step and he can't believe he's walking on water. And then he takes that third step and looks around at what's going on around him. The wind was still blowing every bit as hard as it had been when he was so sure he was going to die. The waves are still swelling. The water is still churning beneath him. And suddenly, Peter realizes how impossible this all is, and he begins to sink. Now, I've always liked Peter because he often speaks or acts before thinking, and it makes me feel pretty good about my, my own tendency to do just that. Um, you know, I, I sometimes speak and act without thinking, and when I say sometimes, I mean most of the time. But of all of the Peter stories, this is by far my favorite Peter story. Because Peter the Rock takes a step of faith, sees the stuff going on around him, and then begins to sink like a rock. You can't tell me God doesn't have a sense of humor. But we all do just that, don't we? We're all like Peter in our own moments. Sometimes that first step, as huge as it might seem, is actually the easy part. To continue putting one foot in front of the other is where we get caught up because we notice all the stuff of life spinning out of control around us. Storms rage all the time, but sometimes they are raging when we are trying to do something huge. And when we see those storms, we feel like we're going to sink. Fortunately for Peter, his story didn't end with him sinking. Because just when he thought all was lost, a hand plummeted into the water and grabbed him by the scruff of his neck and pulled him to safety. You were doing it, Jesus basically says. You were doing it. Why did you doubt? Well, Peter had looked around and saw only the impossible rather than what Jesus was making possible for him. And so he sank. Well, I know that feeling. It's the same feeling I had when the diving board launched me into the air past a point of no return, and I couldn't see the faithful brother treading water beneath me anymore, the one who had always defended me, the one who attended to me when I was sick or hurt. No, all I could see was the brother, was the brother who had shot me. He had shot me. <laughs> You know, I couldn't see the brother who was going to catch me and get me to safety. I could only see the brother with that mischievous, with that mischievous twinkle in his eye and a BB gun in his hand. And so I sank. But you don't have to be literally sinking in 12 feet of water in the deep end of the pool to know what Peter was feeling. Because we've all experienced it in other ways. It's that moment when things seem too overwhelming and our attention is everywhere except on Jesus. It's the worst feeling. But just like Peter, I can tell you that Jesus is still there for us, even when we're so focused on everything else that we can't see him. Jesus is still reaching into the depths to pluck us out. He might give us a good shake when, we, when he gets us up out of that water. He might demand to know why we sank when we could have just walked. But he's going to be there, pulling us out. And, and that, that's not even the best part of it all. Because when Jesus gets Peter, waterlogged as he is and sheepish as he feels at this point, when Peter gets back into the boat and Jesus climbs in behind him, all of a sudden the storms that had frightened them all so much stop. The winds just cease. The waves settle. Sudden silence can be more unnerving than the chaos. Have you ever been watching television and all of a sudden out of the blue the power goes off and you're suddenly immersed in this dead silence? 
so that your ears begin to ring from the sudden lack of constant noise. Silence can seem loud in moments like that. But while Peter lay in that loud silence in a heap in, in the bottom of a boat with the other disciples huddled around him, in that unsettling moment, Jesus is standing there with them. Jesus is standing there against all the odds, against all the forces of nature and all the things that had frightened us or overwhelmed us or just, they just disappear. So the next time the stuff of life starts to distract you when you feel like you were sinking, stop and look for Jesus. He's still there. He hasn't gone anywhere. Look for the hand that is reaching out for you. Look for the calm in the midst of the storm. Always be looking for Jesus. Amen.